Laurel. And uh, so I work, I'm uh, an agile coach, a technical coach. I work with Singapore Airlines. <coughs> I have been a team web developer and I still do a little bit of coding. <coughs> and I have my special uh, in a sweet corner for JavaScript. In my heart, I sort of continue to do a bit of a development on and off with a lot of coaching. Uh, and I am here just to sort of meet, learn, and probably share a few things that I have. Maybe do you want to share who are you? Okay. okay. Um, good afternoon, everybody. So I'm Noor Lamin. I work as a front-end development lead in Credit Suisse. And uh, I am a conference speaker also. Uh, I used to talk about micro front-ends, progressive web applications. And uh, we are the co-organizer of one of the meetup group called Tech Talk Singapore. So yeah, please uh, join and then yeah. Come to our so talks if you're interested. Sense of the house. How many of you are native to Singapore? Who, who are traveling? How many of you are traveling to Singapore? Amazing. Oh, wow. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> wow. This is great. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, this is sort of even good for us, you know. Uh, so we run a small uh, meetup here within Singapore and. Uh, uh, it's all about technology, so we do this for all the tech enthusiasts, different topics every month. So whatever is of interest to different people, be it JavaScript, be it blockchain, uh, be it uh, microservices, micro content, and so on. Uh, we try to do these events on a monthly basis. So next time while you are here, uh, you are accordingly invited to be in TechBox. Um, yeah, that's us. Uh, so yeah, what are we going to do? Okay, uh, agenda. Uh, since it's a work workshop, you don't want to talk uh, much on the slides, uh, but we understand that it's good to have a basic understanding of what is PWA and why do we need PWA, and the building blocks which enables building progressive web applications. <coughs> and then we will straight away dive into developing an app, or I would say converting an existing app into a progressive web app. And then we will be deploying it and testing it across Android, iOS, Mac, and Windows. Okay. Uh, just to get an idea, how many are already familiar with progressive web application? What it's all about? Okay. So how, how many of you kind of uh, developed something? Hands-on experience? No, that's good. So what we are going to do is we are going to start from the basics so that everybody uh, gets familiar, and then they can try on their own. What is PWA? There are so many definitions of uh, progressive web applications. So one of my favorite is this one. It's combining best of web and best of native apps. Okay. So we all know like uh, the best of web. Web is like you can just click a link and access an application, and then you can do whatever you want, and it's like works across all devices, all operating systems. So you don't need to kind of uh, specifically download iOS app or develop iOS app or native apps. And also web is inclusive. Everybody in the world can access to the web. So irrespective of whether what device they have. Okay. And the best of native apps. The native apps are really good. I think all of us have uh, used apps and then we have smart ones, tons of apps on the home screen. And uh, the best part about native apps are like they give very good uh, user experience. So they also engage the users, like push notification and all those things, which are not uh, available in web before. And uh, <coughs> okay, sure, once again. Yep. Okay, so we have, we have just seen what is PWA and some of the features of PWA. Uh, first of all, why do we need PWA? So this is the statistics, you see. The left hand side is average monthly unique visitors. You see app has a score of seven and the web has 15.7. The reach of the web is way higher than the app. On the other side, average monthly minutes per visitor, how much time they spend in the web or app. You see app, they spend more time compared to the web. 
So why is it? Why the engagement is slower in the web? Constraints on the mobile web. <coughs> it has a greater reach, but lacks on the richness. The usability, the uh, richness, and the engagement is lacking. <coughs> Unlimited access. Let's see the constraints on the app side, the native apps. The problem with the native apps are, let's say if you want to use an application in web, you just click a link and then you see and then you decide whether you want to use it or not. In apps, first you have to know the name, you have to go to the app store or Android store and then you have to search for the application and then you have to see it and then you have to download it and then you have to install it and then you have to launch it and then if you don't like it, delete it. So the distribution problem is there in the native apps. <coughs> and another problem is, it's not all like Singapore and other developed countries, you have a good network conditions. Uh, in some of the countries, the network is not reliable. So if you want to download an app before you can use it, I think for example, the 60 MB app in one of the countries we visited took seven minutes just to download. The user has to be patient for seven minutes to just download and then launch it and then try to see if it is useful. The storage, <coughs> some of the users will might have a low end devices which may not have lots of storage so it will be problem for them also and the cost of the network bandwidth yeah, the data okay so that's all so we just want to cover what is pwa and what we are trying to do in in one line we are trying to make the web application closer to the native application and to why there is a need for progressive web application even though we have a native mobile apps so now let's see the building blocks. The last few years, lots of good development happened on the progressive web application side, which enables us to provide features which are close enough to native apps. So I will give it to Ritesh to talk about the building blocks which enabled progressive web applications. Sure. Uh, quick question, might be a really stupid one. Anyone who is not a web developer? <coughs> Everyone is a web developer. How, okay, not <laughs> Uh, how many of you are also differences that you see? And where do you think web app is different from a mobile app? What do you like about a mobile app that probably that does not have any thoughts? It's fast. It's fast, yes. What more? Yeah, notifications, uh, mobile apps are interactive, they talk to you. What else? <coughs> Offline capabilities. Offline capabilities, so you could work on your mobile app even if you are not connected to internet. You could play games, you could do whatever things that you do on your app, you could interact with it, yes. Anything else? Hardware features. Sorry? Hardware features. Hardware features, so they are native, so it has support from the operating systems, whatever the operating system of your mobile is, be it Android, be it iOS, you have support. So that means essentially the performance it goes, the things are there. And mobile apps are rather the first class citizens in the mobile world, right? If you have to access a web app, okay, find a browser first out of all your apps, and in that app sort of go and open in the browser. And then a web app, if it is not responsive, it would re look really ugly. You would also sort of see the web app that we normally sort of develop <coughs> also a maximization of utility. You would have so many controls here and there, so a lot of things that you could do, a lot of data that you could see and interact with. While mobile apps are rather on minimalization sort of thing. So your experience is minimal. I know just exactly this one action that I take, it takes you somewhere else, and I do certain more actions. Right? So it gives you sort of a workflow, while web apps gives you a lot of features and then you could sort of do a lot of things here and there. Uh, but then there are a few uh, other challenges as well. If you look at native apps, right? If you do uh, native app development, you would see you would have Android developers, you would have iOS developers. You have different apps that you're doing. You might be using some hybrid um, software technologies like React Native or so to develop, but you still are going to start up and, uh, in a model that mm -hmm. probably have those hybrid wrappers on the top are uh, deployed as a native app. Um, so your teams could be different, and the technology choices are uh, sort of even broader. 
secondly, uh, as you look at um, uh, after the the the, the, the forgot that point. I think it was pretty crucial point. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any phrase. Uh, so uh, also when you look at sort of an, uh, web apps, right? Web apps are rather very lighter in size. Whatever information that you need is on the server. You request, you fetch it, your work is done. But when you access a mobile app, it's all on your uh, uh, sort of a mobile, right? So if it's a 50 MB app, it has to rest there. If there's 20 MB app, everything has to rest there. And how much capacity do you have on your mobile? You would realize that sometimes you are just keeping selected apps in your mobile, you are adding, deleting, so on, takes too much of the space, I need more space for a major and so, cannot keep app. And your re-engagement, though the app provides you the feature, it, you might not be able to utilize or you won't even see out of the 100 apps that you have. And because it's probably too heavy. And that's where web app uh, is really good, because if you have the ability to download it, use it at, like a native app, you would realize probably a few KBs or MBs. And then whatever the information that you need, just go fetch from the server. Pretty easy. So can the app have all the features that mobile provide? Can that stay on your mobile? Can you interact with a web app just like you do with the native app? Uh, can it give you push notifications? Can it give you offline capabilities? That essentially is the question what progressive web apps try to answer. And the few building blocks that you see here, apart from your own creativity, how you essentially develop the app so that it gives the feelings of a native app, this is what uh, the language framework provides you. Uh, one, web app manifest, and second is the service workup. Uh, web app manifest is more of a JSON file. Think of it, a progressive web app in a nutshell is nothing more than HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Okay, uh, and then you have this JSON file that essentially lets you sort of see that how you want your uh, look and feel of your app to be, uh, how it should appear on a mobile, what would be the icons like, how the name would appear, and app manifest is something that gives you the ability uh, to save it on your a mobile screen just like an app, so it appears nothing different from a native app. These are the settings, these are the images, these are the orientations and the display of the app. When you see an icon, it has a small name. Uh, whole name might be Facebook, but a small name might be a tweet. Uh, it has a little icon. When you click on that icon, you will see a splash screen coming over. And then it sort of displays certain messages. Some images pop up, and the app opens up. It's very responsive. You could go around. So all those capabilities are something that comes with manifest which is essentially a JSON file. Uh, let's have a look what it looks like. Pretty simple. Uh, whatever pages, web app uh, pages that you have, all you have to do is link the manifest uh, through this uh, uh, tag, link relation. Relation type is manifest, and the link made over the file space. Uh, it gives you short name, long name, icons that you want. So if you're looking either on a tablet, if you're looking on a mobile, if you're looking on a desktop, what are the different size of cycles that you want? What icons would appear if you're looking mm -hmm. on a splash screen? Uh, display, do you want if you have address bar or not? If you put it standalone, there won't be address bar, so it just gives an app feeling. You could put the orientation that is sort of in a portrait or a landscape. If you're developing a game, you could like that. And simple key value pairs that you could define. This is what I want my app to be. They are served in 20, 30 pop properties. You just get through it and you see that it just looks like it, right? But that is not good enough. Look and feel is one thing. How does it provide you the capability of say push notifications, or plan capability? It needs a head to yourself, right? Now remember, uh, mobile apps are something that, uh, uh, sorry, web apps are something that stay at the server. You request something, it delivers the JavaScript to you, execute it, if you need something from the API, you put a call back then how would it work offline? It needs something to interact with the server. It needs something to sort of and say that if I'm not offline, I will listen to my what my user is saying, record it, and whenever I get back off online, I will send it to the server and get the response back. That is the role of service worker. It acts as a proxy between the browser and the web server. It just sits on your browser in the background 
listens to all that you're talking to the server, mm -hmm. records it. If you are online, depending on how you configure it, it would send the response, uh, send the request, get the response, pass it to the browser, to your app. If you are offline, it will say, okay, <coughs> online, this request cannot be sent, let me save it somewhere. And as and when I detect I'm back online, I will uh, send it to the server, get the response, and do the same thing. So this is the very basics of what service worker is. Uh, again, service worker is just a JavaScript file. Uh, with a simple exception, it is not integrated to your web app. It is something that sits uh, outside of your app, though it's uh, uh, it's something that transfers with your app, but it's uh, asynchronous, it runs in the background, and it does not have access to your DOM objects. So it cannot interfere with what you are doing. But uh, it would still sort of listen to the request, pass on, and get the message back. Cool, enough talking. Let's start and see this in action. Okay. Let's go. The first thing we will be doing is adding the web app manifest so that your website can be added to the home screen like app. And then you can verify that in Mac, Windows, and iOS, and Android. So recently, the PWA, uh, the app manifest support has been added to Linux, Mac, and Windows. So desktop also, you can have an app, and then you can launch it. So we are going to see that. So let's get rid of the slides. Okay. So what we are going to do now is we are going to take an existing app and add all the progressive features to it. So prerequisite, I hope everybody has Git, Node version greater than 10, Chrome latest version, and maybe people can write their email address. We can invite them to the Slack channel so that we can copy and paste some of the things. Yeah. Okay. Email addresses, right? Yeah, email addresses. Yeah. Whatever they used for Slack. Yeah. So, uh, are you able to see this at the back? Yeah. Okay. So, if you satisfy all the prerequisite, try to follow these steps. Git clone this one. Uh, can you able to see from the back? Uh, Logic, yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, you can get the URL from there also, the clone URL. Just raise your hand if you need any help.
So once you get the project install and start, uh, you need to have a Heroku account. So go to heroku.com and then you can sign up. Uh, Heroku would just allow you to deploy your progressive app and then you would be able to see it on your profile. Yeah, We're trying to deploy into the cloud so that we can access it. Uh, once you install and start, uh, make sure that you can see the screen. Let me know once you are done with all these five steps and then we can take the next five steps later on.
let me know if anybody is still trying to finish the five steps anybody still wait trying to finish the last five steps okay cool Okay, if you have installed Heroku CLI, then you can do Heroku login from your command prompt or terminal. And then it will ask you for your credential again, you can type it. And as a next step, you go to the heroku.com and then once you log in, you can see a new project, new app option and then you can call it like SG clinics hyphen here you can put your name here, the short form. In the region you can put maybe United States or Europe anything. Once you have created the project in heroku.com and then from the command line you can try this uh, command heroku git remote hyphen a and the, your name whatever name you have created you have to give the same name. The third step will attach your git project with heroku so that whenever you push all your changes will go to heroku and then it will be auto deployed. When you do git remote uh, v, you, you should see the Heroku as a one of the origin.
Uh, I'll go get remove SG clinic, she got the same name, yeah? Okay, what's that are you editing? So here what are we trying to do? I have created, uh, I have downloaded a folder from the git and then after that... Uh, uh, you are inside that folder? I think yeah. it's a SG clinic happening. Okay, I think you're good. You can... This is the folder. Okay. Can you do the last command, the next one, git remote hi fi v. Okay, now all set. So now you can run the last command, git push. Now this will push your project to the cloud and then you can able to access it from there. Which one? The git remote hyphen ESC clinics. Uh, this one. We are creating a remote okay. uh, app. Okay. Yes, the app is created just a name. It doesn't have any code, right? Yes. Sir. And then we are attaching so this. We created a new project with the name in the GUI. In the GUI. It doesn't have any code. Yes, so we need to attach the code and yes. upload it there. Yes, to link your git project with Heroku, that's the step. Git remote attach this project. Then it attaches your project to the Heroku and then now you are pushing the code. Okay. Now the code will go there. Okay. I think it will take time. It's still going on. Okay. Mm. Okay. Did you take the version 1 or the normal one? I think it should be a normal one. So when I type it, it came to V1. Yeah. Okay. Can you go here? You should get this. Maybe you can repeat this. Right? This is the completed code. You can refer back. Now you create a new project in Heroku with a different name. So let me know once uh, everyone is done with all the steps and then you can try to access your Heroku app from your browser. It will be like Yeah, don't forget to put HTTPS so because all the features we are going to put needs uh, HTTPS. And then you should be able to see the same app, whatever you have seen locally. Cool. You are able to access it in your mobile? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Can you try to add to home screen? I did that. It did, doesn't look too good at the moment. Doesn't yes. Yet. So, yeah, at the moment, I can just go, ah, open up this yes. again. Yes. Icon. Yes, you can remove it and then that's what we are going to do next. So you can also access this URL from your mobile and then see how it looks and then from your mobile try to add to home screen and see what happens. Are you done with the steps? So yeah, done. done. Are you done? Yes. Okay. Are you done? Okay. 
Are you done with the steps? Perfect. Are you guys done with the steps? Okay, cool. Are you guys done? Okay. Try to access the URL from your yes. mobile. Can you come all verify it by the time? Okay, this is the one, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. The next step is you created the second mm -hmm. step. The third step is yeah. Heroku Git Remote. Have you done it? Okay, can you go to the. Yeah. So here, private step. Oh. Heroku. Yeah, before oh, right. we have a okay. git remote. No, yeah, just a name. Okay. Yep, enter. Okay, so you have to install the Heroku command line. Can you go to the browser? Okay. Yes. download this and install this okay. I just need to download this is Windows right yeah this one we're downloading yeah and then you can see so then that command so he's now downloading the Heroku CLI. Once he's done, you can help him with the steps. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah. Once it's done, you can install it. Yeah. Are you done? Yeah. Okay. I hope everyone is done with the steps. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We can move on and do our first PWA feature uh, which is adding an app manifest and which will help us to add this uh, website web app into home screen so that you can launch it like mobile app. Okay, so it is covered uh, some part of it, what are the steps you need to do. So let us look at it again. Okay, first go here public index.html. And then you just need to uncomment this line. Okay, so then we need to add this manifest.json file, which we do not have at the moment for that. And get the file from here. Okay, once again. Go to GitHub, and there is a second project which is SG Clinix version 1. Uh, just take this file from there. Do not download the whole project that has the completed code. So, do not download it. Just take this file and then put it in the public folder. So, I am just going to do these steps. Just follow me and then you can do it yourself. Okay, this is the file, just copy it, go to public folder, manifest.json, <coughs> okay. 
and then paste it here. Okay, and the next step is let us walk through this file. Okay. The first one is short name. This is the name which will appear in your home screen. So, normally if your app has a bigger name, you should provide a short name so that the, the name it will be displayed in the home screen of your mobile or your desktop in, in your desktop and uh, name is the actual name. Icons. So, you need to provide uh, icons with various sizes so that the operating system will the browser will decide uh, which icon to pick and then it will use it in the home screen. So, we have mobile, iPad, desktop. So, it is good to provide uh, multiple icons. So, if you want these icons, you can get it from here the same project version 1 images. So, it has 4 icons you can download this and then put it under the same public images can copy the whole image folder and paste it there. So, I am going to do the same step. Public images going to copy it. You just need to I think replace the images here. Just replace the whole folder here. All right. Okay, once you put all the images here, so there is three changes index.html, you uncomment the manifest JSON, and the second part thing is add this file manifest.json here and then add the images. That is it. You can go here npm run build. then npm and start server. Okay, it is already in use. So, let me put the steps here and then you can follow one by one. <coughs> Step 1, uncomment. Okay.
these are the steps and then you can access it again and then now try to add to home screen and then see how it looks. From the desktop, once you have done it, uh, sometimes you will see this option install SG Clinix. If you do not see this option, do not worry, uh, you can go to more tools and create shortcut. And then it shows this icon, whatever we have added, and then also it shows the name. This is the short name which was given in the manifesto JSON, and you check this box open as window. Then it is coming in a different window than the browser window. You can select book, <coughs> you can close. In the desktop, you will see this SC Clinic. You open it, it opens here, not in the browser window. Exit is it? Let me have So after I create this uh, this app, I want to open it. Okay. 
So is it in desk? No apps. Okay. Can you do it again? Uh, Setting. Oh, no. Uh, what else? Motors. Motors. Create shortcut. Create shortcut. Uh, okay. Click, click, click this. Open as window. Open as window. Okay. Yep. Create. Uh, create. Yep. Try to open it. Hmm, maybe let's close all the things and make sure your thing is running. Heroku. Hey, I have uh, on my terminal here say server starting using port one. You should access it from here, local, local host 4000. We haven't yet deployed to Heroku. Okay. So access it from local host 4000. Create shortcut, open as window, yeah. Maybe I use Chrome. You are using Chrome? No, I'm using Brave, which is the core of the Chrome. Oh, can you use Chrome? Yeah. Like Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Yes, it takes time. Okay, let me come. Almost in my Horoku account, I don't see anything after pushing. So this is stuck here, and then if I come my head the push was successful. I'm not sure about that. Here, it's not here. Oh, yes. Okay, so this is the second one. Yeah. Deployed. It's fine. Yeah, it just deployed. Okay, so now you npm run build after that start server. Can you close and try again? After after this, you access the app from localhost 4000 port number because we haven't yet deployed to Heroku, so you can access from localhost. Run build. Okay. Those who have completed this, you can do the next step. So you can commit the changes, git commit, and then do a git push Heroku master. This step will push our latest changes into Heroku so that you can try to access it from your mobile phone and then you can try to do the same, add to home screen and then launch it from mobile. You can commit and then push to Heroku, git push Heroku master. Time. I think we started earlier. Right? Just like a native app. If you have an Android phone, you might also see it uh, 
You already deployed to Heroku? Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, this one now we haven't fixed. <laughs> we haven't tried. <laughs> the orientation, yes. Yes, I think that the manifest just JSON file has a. So fast, mm, yes, it has an option. <coughs> Actually, you can quickly Google and then you can try to change it. <laughs> Uh, if you have an iPhone, you can try to access it from Safari and then at the home screen. <coughs> if you have an Android phone, try to use Chrome. Yeah. Is it coming? Yeah, it installs like outside the web browser, but the icon isn't correct. Though. Yes, it's not correct. Can you delete it and try again? It should come. You deploy to Heroku? Yeah. Okay. Launch it, yeah. Wait, normally it should change. Did you add the images? Yeah. Can you try? They're all there. And also like here as well. Oh, all correct, okay. Close all the browser, try again. Safari, yeah. Mm. Any tabs open, can you check? Oh, okay. Mm. It does just matter, you just need to close this tab yeah. for this one and then it should be okay. Can you try HTTPS? Yes. Please make sure you try HTTPS when you access the Heroku. Hmm. iOS quirk or something. Yeah, I'm just same people using iOS it was which version. Hmm. Can you play that? Sometimes it comes later. Hmm. Let me try you or you are in my phone. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you do like this? Okay, in the commit command itself, you can give the message. Can you try again commit and then hyphen m, you can give the message there itself. I have been a Windows user now. I yeah, me too. <laughs> Type Q and plus. Okay. Type of Q. Q, yeah, right? Yeah. And yeah. Okay. Get it. Get it. Get it. So the icon, as soon as I uh, access the Heroku URL in my phone, it will come over. Yes, git push Heroku master. Now it will push to Heroku. Once this is done, you can try to access. I'll try to access your URL from my phone. The Heroku URL. You can log into Heroku and then you will have open. Yes. What's very oral? Yes, G. Kleenex hyphen. Okay, Daniel. delete mine okay. mm. 
something wrong with your deployment, I think. Can you show the index.html? Okay, I'll manifest. Is it under images folder? Oh, everything looks correct. Okay. I forgot to tell you. How come it's okay for others? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think in the iOS you need to add these icons. Oh, the four. The ah, yes. Okay, for people using iPhones, you need to do one more step. So, Apple doesn't respect their manifesto JSON, so you have to do, they have their own way of doing it. Copy this and put it your in index.html. So I'll just put it here. It's just the same uh, tag with different images. You are able to see the icon in mobile. Is it coming? Mm. Add to home screen. Add. <coughs> yes. Okay, cool. many of them. I think they just trying the last step. After that it should be okay. Manifest is okay. Can you just raise your hand if you are still doing it? Okay. Anybody else? Okay, let's give five more minutes. Yeah. Is it working now? Oh, okay, deploy. Okay. Is it deployed? Um, okay, you have an iPhone, yeah. Yes. Uh, X or multiply control? X, X. Uh, I think maybe we can try small X. Uh, if you have not already tried to deploy it on Heroku and try to it from your phone, uh, you can add it to your home screen and it should just appear as a native app. If it doesn't, uh, you can call us. So deployed. Let's see. Mm. Refresh, close, and refresh. Yeah, start again. Yes.
anyone got it working in, in their iPhone? Sorry? Okay. Like, yeah. So after we add on the limit, do we need to commit? Yeah, commit and deploy. Sorry? Yeah, git add, commit, and then push Heroku master. Anybody got the icon in iPhone? It's there? Compiling, OK. They're still trying to deploy and get it. By the way, I have added uh, most of you to the Slack channel. Please join so that I can paste this so that you can just copy and paste instead of typing. No need. Oh. What happened? <laughs> Suddenly it works? Uh, I think so, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, like, I quit Safari and now it's got the right icon. Oh, okay, perfect. Any lines? Nice. Cool. You don't need to run build, just commit and then push and Heroku will do, do the build and then it will start it. So you don't need to do npm run build here. Slack. Have you given your email address? Okay. Did you receive an email? No? Okay, yes. Please join Slack so that I can post the code there. No, I haven't seen this. Tablet also. Maybe is it a new one? Or is it special for Huawei? <laughs> I don't know. Sorry? Slack, uh, you should have received an email note to join. From your email address? I think Slack will send an email. Whoever not received uh, Slack invite, let me know. Okay, so I'll give the list, one second. I can see one, two, three, four, five. Please let me know if you haven't received a Slack invite, you can write. Or if you haven't written your email address, you can also write now. Okay. So that we can paste all the code there and then you can just copy and paste.
just one more two things okay everybody done okay, just two sentences okay one second okay everyone is done iphone android desktop cool just few more things here so you see the theme color so this is the background color when the launch screen comes so if you want to customize you can change the color and then you can see and the start url this is the url which will be used when you tap on the home screen icon and then it will open so that's the url will be used here dot means it will use the home url which is localhost 4000 or your heroku app.com okay nothing much yeah so if you are done then we can move on to the next one okay all done cool okay the next feature we are going to cover is uh, making the app offline maybe you can try now so if you disconnect network and then try it will fail because there is no offline uh, capability at the moment uh, we are going to make it uh, offline capable yeah so you mobile app was all done <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah as nur said uh, though it just looks like feels like a native app it has an icon uh, you could install it you could uninstall it uh, just looks like any other thing on your mobile phone uh, but if you go on airplane mode if you try to access it it will say that internet not connect see if that's so offline on ios it works you'll still be able to load things and you'll get so far and then it'll say when you try to book the appointment it seems if you're offline now don't worry you can book the appointment automatically you know yeah maybe by default it does some caching not the intelligent using service control yeah but in safari if you open it there it's not yeah it's not there all right moving on to the next section uh it's called service worker uh so as we discussed a while back about service worker right service worker is something that stays with the browser imagine it is to be a javascript file but which is independent of your application it just sits at the background so that nobody knows listens to what you are talking with the server uh just sort of facilitates your requests sends and acts as an interceptor uh so what we are going to do next is add a small service worker and see how it behaves the main reasons to do service worker is to make your app work offline and to uh, uh make your app save some information that in case you are offline whenever you go back online you don't have to redo it the app will do it for you for itself so uh for that thing um what we need to do is if you go back uh, to your webpack.config.js depending on the id if you search and go to this file uh webpack is a kind of library that allows you to modularize your code and uh, make it more focused it resolves the dependencies makes certain chunks of it and uh, just organizes that information 
uh, in smaller or rather uh, minified files. Uh, so it's a pre-compiler and uh, what we are going to use here, you will see a few commented lines uh, in line 18 on your webpack.config.js, uncomment this line which reads constant workbox webpack plugin and if you search workbox uncomment this block from 570 oops from 570 to 582 it is commented 570 to 582 and line here line number 18 and from 570 to 582 webpack.config.js uncomment line 18 uncomment line 570 to 585 and once you have done that oops sorry go over and npm build and npm start lines to uncomment again line number 18 in webpack config js and line numbers 570 to 585 see there are no errors <coughs> Uh, once you do that and launch your uh, program, what you would see is if you do npm start, npm run build and npm start, you could merge the commands and as you launch your browser on your given port, go to developer tools if you are using Chrome or IE or Mozilla uh, and go into the application sections. You would see manifest that shows all the information that is what you have already added in the manifest. Different icons, the names and everything like that. And you will see a file here named serviceworker.js. Within the application manifest and service worker, see if you have that in your application look through developer tools. Now, to make it simpler, maybe everyone can use Chrome and can get both of developer tools so that they can easily follow. Not that. No. Yeah. Yeah. Just this. I have a few and one, but uh, I don't see the certificate. Not here. 
Okay, you have already built and run. Yeah. So let's see. Yeah, you are going to find service for the start server and give yeah. start server and build is. No, it's generating. It's auto generation right now. Auto generation. Yes. Okay, let's see. PM test is. NPM run start server, yes. server start point. Okay, let's go back. Can you close the browser and reopen? Still. Yeah, still not there. Mm. Uh, can you see the manifest? Is that fine? Yeah. Okay. Let's go to your webpack config once more and go up. Do you have the work, uh, the line number 18? Do you have that? Do we need to add to index.js? Uh, not uh, as yet. Okay. okay. All right. So I think that is. So. Uh, in case you don't see it, that's not a problem because we'll anyways do the very initial step to set it up. If you see it, it's well and good, but it doesn't hurt. Uh, so what we are going to do next is uh, service work, as I say, it's primarily just in JavaScript file that essentially would have certain events that would intercept what browser needs to communicate with the server and back. Uh, it uh, relies on certain, uh, oops. Uh, events named install that is the event to install the service worker activate to activate the service worker the life cycle includes installation followed by activation followed by termination or in between waiting in case. So let's go through this work cycle and sort of thing. It's uh, about adding the load. Yeah. So uh, while you have added uh, that, we'll oh, okay. uh, sure, thanks. Uh, go to your, okay, index.js. window dot add event listener have a load event uh, uh, while service worker is widely supported not necessarily all the browsers support it. So we need to check if the current navigator that you're using is supporting service worker or not. So if service worker in navigator. So if your navigator currently supports the service worker, what happens? If your navigator is supporting service worker, navigator dot service worker dot register. It needs an absolute path, which we will give shortly. Uh, this is a promise that would return a registration object to service worker. Sorry.
Uh, once you have done this, go to your source folder and create a new file. Call it service hyphen worker dot js. under your source sg hyphen clinics under source create a new file name service hyphen worker and add a event listener install We will pass it the event object. And say console dot log installed service worker. Sorry. The you mean this arrow? Wait until yeah, it's a, a command sort of and wait until whatever follows is executed. So the uh, uh, the, the event won't end until uh, whatever are the a list of commands that you pass under it are executed. So this is kind of an uh, uh, the construct within which all that you want to execute and E stands for the event, the event of installation and wait until it is initiated. No, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I need does not need to be under any arrow function. Once you have done it, uh, you could go back to your webpack.config.js uh, there is there are quite a few things there which you could get <laughs> rid of like the new regular exp, uh, expression fallback trim your workbox configuration down to this much The generate SGSW uh, method that you see, change it with inject manifest. So we are not asking this very library to generate a service worker, but refer a service worker that we are creating. And this would need a path where to pick a service worker from. So it will be SWSRC. source folder service hyphen worker dot js and remove this line of clients claim.
Okay, so you have your service worker in place. We have the Webpack config set up, and then we have also added an event listener for load. Okay, I'll also add a console here to sort of and see if the event is being fired in window load event, and let us see what happens. So I'll just build it and rerun. npm run build and npm start server try it In the load event, I forgot to give the path for service worker. So just add the service worker name. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 sure. So I'll just put everything on Slack so that it's easier for you to review. Uh, I first change the index.js file in source, adding the Windows load event. After that, add a service worker, service hyphen worker dot JS in source directory. And under service worker in service hyphen worker.js, write this line of encode, which is the install event, and we are just writing on the console. And lastly, in your webpack config from lines 570 to 573, ensure they look like this webpack dot config dot js so it's all on the general channel of slack now and once you have done these things and when you do rebuild npm run build 
npm run start server Uh, see in your console if you see messages uh, like this. In the window load event, I am ready to register as a service worker and install the service worker. And along with it, you would see a service worker available with a number. If you go uh, to an application tab in your Chrome developer tools and go to the service worker, you should see a service worker with a particular number, probably 0 or 1. Webpack conf this last one is the change for Webpack config file. So on line 570 to 582, just replace that. In Webpack config, yeah. So this workbox 57 to this whole object, right? Just replace that object. That should be it. That's why the screen goes up because you hit the no the HDMI box one. Ah, your mouse. okay. I yeah, thought it's be careful. Careful. all right. Just okay. be careful. Sure. Thank you. Mm. Uh, can you refresh it? Uh, okay. You have received. Oh, no, no, this is something else. Local host. This oh I don't okay you see this one is fine. Server or does not control. Uh, let's go back to the code. Inject manifest. This is fine. Index here service worker. Navigate register. Then registration. Service. Oh, R. <laughs> hey, this could be tricky, no? <laughs> Uh, 
Lovely. Everyone can see those three messages or at least your service worker in place. Your service worker will look like this. Uh, it will probably have a number 0, 1, 2 activated and is running. Just confirm that you have a message like some number is activated and running. All right, cool. Once you have done with that, go back to your service worker and we'll add one more event. Activate. E, wait. Until Activated service worker. Sorry. I'll put this on Slack. once you do that and you go back to your browser and refresh it you would see something like this you would see a old service worker and new service worker that is waiting see if that happens You have probably zero service worker which would be activated and running and another service worker two or three waiting to activate. Once you add the activate event. There is something very interesting about uh, web applications. No? When you work on web application and when you probably deploy it into the production environment and say yes, someone would be consuming this application, what do you usually take care of? Uh, you would probably ensure that while you really deploy it, no one is online because if you, they are online, they would be impacted in certain ways, right? Uh, the, somebody is working on this application and here is the new production release that comes in and everything has changed. The look and feel has changed, that the functionality probably no longer exists or probably whatever they, work they were doing is lost because oops, there was a bounce. right? And that is a common problem that we have with web applications because we have to plan a release of web application. Uh, because everything is related to server, whatever request comes needs to go to the server and the response comes from there. So, if there is a downtime on the server, the application is impacted and the users are impacted. 
the way service worker handles it is that whatever information you think that is important to the users is uh, you cache it, you use it from within the service worker uh, and uh, while suppose you're working on your mobile and then there is a new app update. Usually what happens in native apps is that you would receive a notification or you would see it in your Play Store or App Store that new update is available for your app but it does not update automatically. Uh, you could of course choose it too, but while you are working, at least it does not. It's not like you are surfing through your Instagram or Facebook, oops, there is an update, restart. That does not happen with native apps. So how do we control that in the web app is through service worker to say that as and when there is a new release that happens uh, for a web application, uh, it has new updated service worker that would wait in the background till the time a time a browser is open that means a client is working on an application the new service worker which comes with certain changes like we added the activate event it would not replace the existing one it would wait until all the browsers are closed on that all the clients on this particular browser are closed so if you just do that if you have this open and you see something like this uh, where one browser is active and second one is currently waiting, try to close your browser. See no clients are active and launch it again. Oh, I have to open. See that all the clients are closed. Try to see if, uh, if automatically updates when you close all your Chrome instances. And when you close it and you reload it, it should ideally auto update the service worker to the newer version. That means that whenever a user closes the app uh, in the background and when it opens it again, the service worker will be reinstalled and a new version will be updated, whatever changes have been made. Uh, so that's the difference between what installation is and activation is. Every time you request and there are certain changes, those would be available to service worker, those would be installed, but they would not be active unless the current application is closed and relaunched. Uh, so see if you are able to do that one thing. Hey back, um, once you have done that, also try this. If you now go offline, you could do certain really um, adventurous steps. Stop the web server. Or go in the airplane mode and try to refresh, see if this works. Just uh, close the application and refresh it, see if it works. No, right? Yeah, it, it will still complain about uh, there is uh, no internet or the app is not running. Yes, because uh, we still need to write the code of how does it fetch because service worker is not caching anything as yet. It is just installed but it's a dummy, it does not do anything. Uh, what you see here in your application, uh, I want you to examine that you would see certain ways of storage. You see local storage, session storage, index DB, web SQL, cookies, cache and application cache. Uh, primarily what is being used as a storage mechanism with service worker are cache storage and index DB. These are all asynchronous uh, storage mechanisms. Uh, while cache storage is a key value pair that could store the information, small information like files that you need to be readily or 
uh, be often available and index db for certain operation which are more structured and more data intensive uh, other kind of storage are rather synchronous in nature and they don't work with service worker ideally because service worker in itself is an asynchronous uh, um, worker so yeah uh, so ideally what you would largely be using for storage mechanism are cache storage and index db so uh, now that we know that if you refresh it it says the site cannot be reached so let us try to fix this so we go back and we'll say a uh, cache and give it a name my pwa cache then go ahead and say what files do you want to cache files to cache have the default have index dot html okay this is currently what i want to i just want the index html to be cached and that's all and how when will i do it when i install a service worker i would say wait i'll do it after this oops caches is an api dot open use the cache name uh from here cache name it's a promise so when uh, it will return you a cache so when that cache opens cache dot add all files to cache once you have done that try to build and run i'll put this on slack service worker cache okay once you have done that go back refresh okay and i think you would have normal service worker try to update it in case there is something that's missing and then try to go offline <coughs> probably bring down the app oh sorry what did i do <coughs> and see what it does up oh, sorry let's do run again
sorry remove the console i think that is creating a problem refresh update the cache manually or you could always choose update on reload so that your service worker is always updated see that the ver uh, version number of service worker is updated from whatever your last one was and after that take the bold step of bringing down the server and refresh it oops and error occurred let's see what's going on Uh, uh just see once you refresh the service worker you would see under the cache storage an object created for my pwa cache if it is not created probably it's not refreshed and it will have these two values and then try to bring down your app and then refresh Have some weird problem. Okay. <coughs> It requires one additional step because currently it does not know what to do. While we have cached it, but it does not know. that if i receive such a request what should i do so we got to tell it that whenever you go to fetch how do i respond how should service worker respond it needs to know so e dot respond with say if in the caches if you could find something that matches this request that i make then whatever is the response return the response or try to go and fetch from the server
and once you have done this refresh update your service worker if you have already checked it would be auto updated just ensure it is you could also verify that you have the latest by looking at the sources and the service worker if it has whatever updates that you have made try to bring down the server and refresh you would see a blank page but at least you won't see that the site is down <laughs> see if that happens to you i show the code again add the fetch we are saying that whatever request comes our way we'll try to return it from the cache see if it exists in the cache if it does not exist we'll try and go and fetch it run it update the service worker and see if you see a blank page instead of the site cannot be reached Uh, so probably uh, this before background yeah before background check yeah, yeah. And so we need to split up between because we have one hour yeah one yeah. second push yeah yeah do you all see blank page instead of the site cannot be reached no all right service worker is pending let us look at the service worker what does it show you have the fetch event you have index cache the site cannot be reached index to test you know oh oh i think for you i think you're missing something here yes, so go ahead uh, argument is yeah. oh, okay Mm -hmm. Let us go to application. Oh, you, uh, we need to see something here. So, cache storage is somehow not updated. So, oh, why do you don't even see service worker? Ah. So dates updated at 1525 which is fine cache storage so you already have you have added everything um no but this stuff was here before when webpack was generating it all ah yes 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 so i think what we need to do is let's go back to the service worker uh you already updated the webpack config right? yeah uh, can we do this in the build folder let us see the how the service worker looks mm. ah okay uh, can you delete the build folder and rebuild i'll come that side <laughs> Where after argument list? Yes, let's go and see. Yes, uh, here. So ah, one. line number eight, cash. Uh, what did I do? Uh, uh, command D. Yeah. Cash add all. Remove this console log. Okay. Try this. Try now. I need to restart. Yes. Okay. Yes.
Ah, the thing is that if you go offline from here, yeah. service worker still has access to the server because it nodes is there. So you have to bring down the, the, the application itself uh, and also do this one more thing because I think whatever is, is in the history is not cleared. So if you could uh, clear this. Oh, it's cleared now. Okay, okay. So once you launch the application, yeah. clear the storage and then try it again. So what it will you can get see now. E wait until you have go until you're missing an N. U N T I L until <laughs> so if you already see blank page it's of no use right uh, you would notice that um, lots of things are missing because we are building this whole work package through webpack and it chunks down all your javascript files and your css and everything so uh, when the service worker goes and look out for file it doesn't get the whole file it just because these are rather auto generated. So one way to sort of and do it is to sort of and you have a plugin for service worker in your webpack config and say that, you know, in the runtime, try to identify the dependencies and add all those lists in your own self. That itself is a tedious task. Or you could sort of and go ahead and if you just want to try, you could copy one, go back, uh, what is that? Sorry. You could keep on adding that to your list of files to cache and you will see that it will eventually get resolved. But <laughs> we don't need to do that because there is a much easier way. Um, uh, some of you might already be aware of Workbox, which is a Google product which simplifies the implementation of Service Worker. The reason why I showed you this Service Worker is because this is what how it actually is. Workbox look, makes it look much more simpler and much more easy to implement. Uh, uh, but what Workbox uh, actually hides all the complexity so you don't know what happens on install and activate and fetch and sync and so on. So that's why it was this demo to just understand what service worker and how it actually functions. But actually don't need to write any of this code if you're using Workbox. <laughs> so I'll quickly show you that how by just one line of code could replace all of this. Uh, you already have uh, Workbox installed through the web config. So uh, I'll just copy this one line. If you have these things working, rather you could just comment this out and go ahead and say Workbox dot pre-caching dot pre-cache and route self dot underscore pre-cache manifest or an empty array. Just write this one line and comment everything else in service worker. Posting this on the Slack channel. And after this, npm run start server. We have already installed a plugin for Workbox in our web config, 
and then we are already uh, passing it the necessary parameter to uh, pick from uh, the precast list. Uh, so uh, ideally when you run it, uh, you probably would see that it is uh, encapsulating the install, activate, fetch and all the files that it deems necessary for caching which essentially means everything that is in the public folder of your application be it your images, be it your generic uh, JS files or your index HTML. And if you go back to your browser, you refresh it, ensure that your service worker is updated. Oh, pre-caching is not. Pre-cache. Wait. Pre-cache and trust. is the thing. One typo there, if you are copying from Slack, use this instead. Note the double underscores here. Once you update your service worker, you would see messages like this. Uh, once you do that, if Workbox is installed and you bring down your application, refresh it, you are still missing a few things, but you will see most of things are auto-drawn without you writing a single line of code. So we have not, we have commented install, we have commented activate, we have commented, uh, commented fetch, but yeah, it's everything is inbound within the Workbox. So it makes life much more easier when you have to deal with these things. Um, the next thing uh, is uh, different strategies of dealing with uh, offline content and online content, background synchronization and push notifications. But I guess we all need a little bit of break. 
So let's give it five minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, so before the break, we saw that uh, how uh, you could use Workbox or Service Worker to get the offline capability by caching certain requests. There are different strategies to that you could sort of an, uh, use while caching. Uh, say what specific uh, things you want to cache, when to cache. Uh, there could be things like uh, your style sheets and images and so that you might always prefer to pick from caches and rather certain transaction requests that you send to the server, you never want to cache them. Workbox offers you uh, and service worker in turn offers you different strategies that you could essentially use, uh, which uh, you could define whether you want to just always look up for a certain request from cache only or certain request from always on network or first, if it is not available uh, on the network, pick from the cache, or first just go to the cache, and while you refresh in the background, uh, return from the cache, and then update it, and keep uh, the copies updated. I show you a very quick example of what it is. I realize that we are very short of time, but I'll just give you a demo of how you could really just do one strategy of cache. Workshop dot routing dot register route it takes two to three parameters one you could give it a regular expression of the path that you are looking for and it takes the strategy so workbox dot strategies dot cache first network first cache only these kind of things that you could use to define the different strategies are available in cache first strategy what um, your service worker would do is is to first try to pick from the cache itself if it is not available in the cache then go to the network for this particular endpoint or server resource that we are requesting. Uh, quick view, uh, if you just go to workbox strategies, you would find a quick documentation here that lists about the different strategies that are available. Uh, the syntax is pretty simple, regular expression, whether you are looking for images, you are looking for specific resources, just name it by strategy and that's the only little code that we need to write for this. Uh, we'll see one of the strategies as we uh, move on to see uh, the background synchronization. Uh, uh, background synchronization is something that uh, while you're on your device and you're working on something, 
and uh, suppose you go offline you may lose your work so how to essentially avoid that and how not to redo it a classic example is your whatsapp chats right so you are talking to somebody and you are sending messages and everything but if you get into an MRT and you lose your network uh, your message does not go through but do you have to rewrite it no you just probably write it you post it it shows that yes it has gone out from your window but it has not yet been delivered probably it would get delivered once you come back and or it would say still waiting I cannot find network so you would see a wait sign in there but you don't have to really repost it and how do you bring that kind of capability on the web app is what background synchronization is all about so uh, let's see an example of that one uh, for that uh, I would request you to go to server.js Let us add an uh, endpoint here. And call it. There, you can use it. Where? Another version? This is what they have. Uh, go to server.js. It, oh, I was in server. Yeah, perfect. Come down. Okay, so everything is here. Ask them to put one line. Just wait. If subscription, I'll just write it here. I'll just come in and give something else. It's fine. Uh, this is okay. even for me. I need this subscription object. Then do this. I'll come and do it. Yeah. Yeah. Just so uh, uh, let me not use this one. I'll just uh, I'll just say work, mm -hmm. but I'll just comment it out. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So. Uh, you already have this in uh, v1 uh, it's already on the server right yeah. oh sorry so in the server app, uh, in your server you would already see this one endpoint uh, you could comment out the things and let's sort of and just see that if we could dot send uh, object back and say call it booking status as booked okay and for the timing I will just make it get instead of post okay ah, once you do this run the app let's see if this works okay go on localhost 4000 uh, our endpoint is book see if you are able to access this Uh, for the timing also comment the app use HTTPS it's from line 16 to 23 on server.js just comment it for the time being and in the book just have a dummy sample value return restart Uh, see if you see a response coming back from the server
in service worker there is uh, oh the, uh, ignore this code that was just a sample this is not related to that so yeah you don't need to do this as of now so just in the book have this one object return and comment over uh, the HTTPS part okay see if you are able to see this response coming from the server all right lovely uh, I'll just see everything is updated I'll just clear your storage and everything so that we could have a fresh view at the data that would come in here and then go back to the service worker let us have a strategy where we will say this very endpoint book new workbox strategy now suppose this is something that uh, we really want to get delivered to the server and get a response from the server so in this case where we want the message to be delivered for instance we are doing a bank transaction uh, a cash won't do there right we really want the network to reply over so the strategy that we would use for this booking is network only Uh, in the strategy itself, you could uh, use certain parameters and plugin. Uh, what we are going to use is a plugin, which is workbox dot background sync. Uh, and give it a name. Sync booking. Okay. Object. Ensure this is object. Strategies network only. Yep. Um, so, uh, what it will do in turn is it will call the sync event for service worker. And uh, for every request that is routed to book, it intends to go to the network. So, nothing should be picked from the cache itself. So this request will not be cached, but service worker will always try to hit the network. In case it's not able to hit the network, it will store that request in a cache, and the next time the network is available, it will try to post that request. So let's see if we can make this work. npm run build and start. So we have already seen that we get a response from the booking status as booked. We have cleared our data. Let us go back once it's ready. And I'll just see everything is clear. Notice that index DB is currently null. It does not have anything. Okay. And the service worker just update it. So for me, it's installing. Let's give it a while. Huh. Wrong here. Register. Some typo. Here. 
Mm. Oh. Sorry. The library name is different. Uh, change the regex to reg exp. <laughs> uh, yeah, on um, taking it back on Slack. Rebuild it. Feel free to use Node-Mon if you have. I did not install it. <laughs> Refresh it, see the time it was last updated. Uh, it needs updating. Uh, I just updated mine. It is pre-cached six files. Now, what I'll do is I will try to go offline in the airplane mode. But since I'm running this locally, it will still hit my server. So I will also bring my app down. And call the book endpoint. Let's see if it doesn't. Okay. Go back. You will see that in the index DB, there is an entry now. Which reads like this. The request data in the certain queue, sync queue name and to this URL and whatever information we are sending. Ideally, it would be a post request, there would be sending a whole body, a lot of information, but we just did a simple request, which does not have a lot of information. But yes, it is something that is automatically added to a queue, but it has not, uh, the service worker is not returning you a result. It is storing that so that whenever the uh, server is back online, it could be sent to the server. Now, if you go back, if I go back and restart the server and also switch off my airplane mode, let's see if we see something in the console and if uh, ideally whenever the uh, service worker detects that it's back online, it would fire an event, background sync for tag, request added to the sync request fail to replay because it was still offline and then it will replay at a certain point in time it will retry and this would eventually get clear try it if you could replicate this in your machines
so this workflow should be like this, right? Yes. And, oops. and then we have server, which is just simply setting this. Yes. And I run it, so let me just rerun it. So play this. It shouldn't be, but yeah. You just build and run the server, right? So yeah, I yeah, yeah. So I think it should. So it's like this. Thank you. And Thanks. I get all these Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. I people see this. Okay. Yes, you see the two requests running over. Right? Yes. Okay. So then it, I turn this off. It should. Uh, no. Just yeah, this uh, so thing. this is already sort of, oh. so when you were off, it has already added it. Mm -hmm. And now as, uh, are you on airplane mode? Uh, no, this is the airplane mode, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, what you could sort of try to do is, is to sort of first clear this index DB. Um, and then you uh, go to airplane mode, run it, see it will a get added here. And then as soon as you turn that off and you come back online, this queue will automatically be cleared. But this is local, uh, local host. So okay. even if I turn off the Wi-Fi, it's Yeah, it will still, it detects that you are not connected to internet okay. as far as service worker is concerned. So if I refresh it, it's Yeah. So we'll go offline, and then you can have to show appointment, and then when you come back online, it's not going to be sent the request, but also you get a notification that your appointment has been You are currently connected to, are you on offline or? Okay, also one. Sure. Also switch off since you are hosted in local host, you also need to um, turn the server off. You have to get permission yeah. from the client browser. The client is okay to receive push notification. Okay. So that's the number one, subscribe request no. and then you get a subscription. Okay. One and two only happens if the client gives the permission, client clicks the button allow. So then the client has the subscription object. Then we need the client has to give a subscription object to the server so that when the server wants to send the notification, it will use that object to send the notification. That object will have information of which client and all those information. Then only it can correctly identify client and then send the notification. And then once the client, server has the information, when whenever it needs to send the message, let's say the appointment has been booked, the server wants to send the message. Using the subscription object, the server cannot directly talk to client. The server cannot directly send the push notification for security purpose. The server has to go to the push service. For Chrome, so they have a push service. For Safari, they will have, so maybe it's the same with the native apps also. So the web server contacts the correct push service and then uh, sends a message. This is the message I want to deliver to client. And then the push service uh, delivers the message to the client. So the push service acts as an intermediary. Okay? So let's end. Uh, first, uh, let's uh, clean up this class appointment review.js under booking. So, few changes you need to make. Just uncomment this first if it is commented. And also, you have to make sure this method exists book appointment. That is it. Okay, all good. Okay. The next thing you need to do is go to server.js. Just whatever we have done, just revert this change and comment those lines. Make it post back. Okay. So, if you want, I can post this. I am just going to make small change. This line will not be here in your code. I am going to make it 
subscription object okay so i'll just put this in slack you can just copy and paste I think it is all okay. Let me run it. So just few changes. Appointment review dot js. You are just putting back the methods. Notification book appointment and enabling this method. And then server dot js. you are reverting the previous changes and making it post and this one i have pasted this in slack you can just copy and paste okay let's see maybe you can watch first and then i will send all the code through a slack and then you can try it on your end okay Okay, so let's go back. Four thousand. So just for make it everything clean. So update, maybe unregister. Go to clear storage, clear site data. is start okay all good so the scenario we are going to replicate is let's say you are trying to book appointment you are in mrt mrt train and then suddenly the network goes off you want the appointment still go through when you are back online and then you want to receive a notification that the appointment has been booked or not so let's see book so this is the normal case so let's go with this this is normal case confirmed the appointment status will be confirmed let's uh, switch off the network make it offline okay if you are offline you will see this additional text it seems you are offline don't worry we can book the appointment automatically when you are back online do you wish to proceed we are asking the users permission whether they are okay to go ahead so they have to choose this yes at this point in time uh, when you are doing first time it will ask you whether do you want to allow this website to send notification the client has to say yes then you go next the appointment status will be pending but it's okay but once you are back online you should be receiving a notification that appointment has been booked that's what we are going to try now okay for that let's go to the code the first step i prepared a cheat sheet let me paste this don't worry i will paste the steps in slack so that you can follow one by one so first is there is a library called web push uh, which will help us to the server to communicate with the push service so you have seen in the diagram there is a push service for safari chrome and everything we don't need to write code there is a library which will help us to communicate to the right push service and then deliver the message and also since we are communicating with the uh push service so everything has to be encrypted so the message has to be encrypted so we have to use private and public key so the first step here is npm install global web push 
So, let us do it one by one. Okay. npm install global. We are going to create a pair of public key and private key. Okay. So, this is the second command. Web push generate rapid keys. Yes, sir. So, you get a pair of private and public key. You just need to copy this public key. Okay, so here I have a file called rapid keys. Everything commented out. Let us uncomment. Since I generated a new set of key, let me replace it. This is public. Let me copy the private. That is it. So, we have created a private and public key using the web push tool and then it is there. So, we just updated the rapid keys, we will be using it. The server has to have both the keys, but the server has to give the public key to the client. So, that the client has the public key, but the server has both the keys. Okay. So, we have updated, we have done with the step 3. So, now we need to go to step 4. When the user clicks the toggle button, notify me when the appointment is booked. So, we have to put some code. So, this is the code. In the interest of time, I will just copy and paste. So, appointment review. So, you have this part push notification code here. So, what happens when the user clicks the toggle button? Send me notification. Okay. Copy and paste it here. I will walk through this code, what it does. So, we need to see if the service worker is there because for push notification, service worker has to be there and if it is ready. And also, we are checking if the push manager is supported. The service worker supports push notification. If not, you return it. If it supports, that is fine this if checked means user clicked yes, if no means this will be no uh, false. You go here registration dot push manager. So, this is the one of when this code executes user will get a pop up. This website wants to, you to send notification do you allow. If the user says allow then it will come inside. If the user says do not allow it will not come inside. So, then after this you have this the browser will have the subscription object. So, the client authorized. So, that is uh, browser will have the subscription object. I am just storing the subscription object into a state here. So, in this uh, web page I have the subscription object if the user clicks allow then I have this object. And the next thing I need to do is when the user clicks proceed. So, the user is ok to get the notification. So, when they proceed on click this dot book appointment. Okay. So, this is book appointment. So, this method what it does is it calls API book dot JSON and it passes the subscription object the object which user allowed us to send the notification and the actual appointment details. So, along with the actual appointment details I am also sending the subscription object to the server. Okay. So, the next thing is server has to receive this book appointment request and then send the notification once it is booked. We are going to server. So, I think we need to change it to API slash book or we can remove it from here. Ok. 
Okay. We can change it to bug. Okay, the endpoint will come here. So, the request has two information. One is subscription object and the appointment details. The subscription object is the permission which client gave so that the server can communicate the right client and send the notification. So, what I am doing is in the normal case, I am returning this and if the subscription object is present, that means client allowed us to send the notification, then I am calling send notification method. I am just providing as message, your appointment is booked successfully, that will be the message inside the notification and I am passing the subscription object. What this method does, send notification, let us go here. This is the important part for sending the push notification. So, just simple, just two, two, three lines of code. Let us look at this first. Web push. This is the library which we installed, npm install web push. So, you can go up and see. So, this is the library we used. This library will help us to send the notification to the client. So, you just need to call web push dot send notification you have to pass the exact subscription object you received from the client. So, whatever you received from the client, you are going to send it to the push service, what message you want to send and the additional option. What are the additional options? Time to live, maybe 60 seconds, so it will wait. If the user is not available, it will retry, so the time and vapid details. This is where you are giving the public key and private key for the encryption. So, all the encryption you do not need to do, this library will take care of it. You just need to provide private key and public key. So, this library will do all the work for you, it will encrypt and then it will communicate with the right uh, push service and it will send the notification. Good. There is one missing part here, what is missing? So, the client gives the permission, we send to the server the subscription object and the appointment details and the server trying to send the notification through push service. So, there is one missing part, in the client part, client has to receive the notification and then trigger a prompt. So, the last part of the code, you need to go to service worker. Here, I will also quickly copy and paste. Okay, I will explain this code. So, push notification, will it, any idea will it come if you close the browser, you close the app, will you receive the push notification? App it works, in web also it will happen. So, you can close the browser, you can close the app, still the server will send the push notification and the client will receive it. That is how, that is why, that is that, a good thing about the service worker, even though the app is closed, the server can wake up the service worker and execute the code for that app. So, self dot add event listener, similar to fetch, we have something called push. When the, serv the push service sends the notification, this code will get executed and it will have an event. The message will be part of event dot data dot text. So, this is the actual message the push service is sending to the client and then you are just doing self dot registration dot show notification and the message and the title. So, let us see what is the body option. I think the title is repeated, you can remove this. So, you can provide an icon for the notification and also the message. I am passing it here. So, that is it. So, the main part of the code is this one. The client has to receive the notification and show it and the server has to send the notification using this library, that is it. So, let us try to run it and then see if you are receiving the notification and then you can try it on yourself and then I will put all the code and steps there. One another thing for testing the push notification, we have to deploy it to Heroku, local host will not work because when the server tries to communicate with the push service, it checks whether it is HTTPS. So, local host it is just HTTP. So, we have to deploy to Heroku and then test this push notification. So, let us double check if we have done all the things. So, client side, we are receiving the notification 
and then we are showing it perfect on the server side we are sending the notification using web push and then we are providing the option private key and public key okay and then whenever this book is called we are going to send the notification if the user allows us so and then appointment review when the user gives us the permission we are doing all these things yeah notify clicked and book appointment okay let's try to build it sorry for this we don't need to build get status These are the changes I am going to commit and deploy to Heraku. Let me quickly double check. This is fine, this is fine, this is fine. Manifest, load. This is fine. Okay, cool. Okay, I have committed. Now I'm going to deploy to Heroku. Git push Heroku master. Meanwhile, let me put the steps in Slack. Okay, we just need to do this appointment review. The client should have a public key, and we need this. So meanwhile, you can follow the steps I posted in Slack, one, two, three, four. We will 
ఉండేము క్లినిక్స్ హెరోకు యాప్ okay so this is the demo so i just click the button uh, receive notification once the appointment is booked and this is the pop up it will show so the user has to click allow or block so let's say i'm allowing so then the client browser has the subscription object which it can send it to the client okay the appointment is pending and let's see the heroku logs also okay appointment details and push subscription object this is the subscription object and we are sending using the library so you see notification received your appointment is booked successfully did you see the notification so let's try again okay the second time when you check this button you will not have that pop up coming again because once you are given the permission so it will take it so notification received <laughs> so maybe in the interest of time so i think we got the message but the notification prompt uh, did not work maybe if you want to stay we can stay otherwise in the interest of time uh, i will push the code and you can try it on your end okay thank you in the github the second project version 1 has all the completed code so you can always refer to version 1 and then you can try it on your end thank you all